But let's kind of get into kind of your story a little bit. Let's kind of talk about your battle with addiction. I don't know how much you want to open up about that, but anything you're willing to put on camera, I'd love to hear about kind of your battle with it, how you got through it, like that whole story. Sure. Yeah. So I'm, I'm an open book now when it comes to that. Um, I don't know if you saw that video I posted, like where that, it was all that inspiration, that thing I edited. I did. Yeah. That, that was a lot of work. The thing about <laughs> your channel and what I really like about your channel is you kind of, and I know you haven't posted in a while, but you kind of started from like high quality from like the jump. Like if you go back on my channel, like, and you watch like the first video, like the very first video I posted, it's like the quality is awful. Like it's like potato camera, like there's no autofocus. Like <laughs> as like we can see ourselves right now in that little like flip screen, there was no flip screen. So I think I filmed that like three times. The first time, like it was like looking at the ground. I think that's uh, how it's supposed to be. Yeah. But yours were just like really high quality. Like you had good like obviously it can always be better but for mm. a first video like it was i thought it was fantastic thanks you had great angles the color like the color grading looked really good like i was actually really impressed i'm like this makes my first video look awful oh, like your consistency <laughs> the consistency is where it's at i'm like i'm a super perfectionist and i think perfectionism is that a thing a perfectionism that's that's the word right perfectionist i think, I think being i think being Whatever. a perfectionist kill is is almost like a killer for people who want to like for long-term goals because like something like music production or something like you know posting youtube videos right. it takes learning and messing up but like when you're a perfectionist it like it kills you it eats at you so yeah. like i've had to find a way to that's one thing i can suggest if you're a perfectionist and you're going to try doing an entrepreneur type thing when it comes to youtube or whatever it is you have to find a way to stay you know be outside of yourself like even if you feel like things need to be perfect find a way to remind yourself like this is just me you know like it's it's going to be okay no matter what this is a learning process because you know it's never going to be perfect it's never going to be perfect especially when you first start it's exactly just like, your first video is not going to be good it's probably going to get like 10 views if you're mm. lucky like some of my videos still get like 10 views and it's <laughs> yeah and it's in you know and that's and that's just how it is and it's just you know you just got to keep it up yeah but anyway back to the addiction yeah so thing. why don't we touch on that a little bit so um i you know i grew up i grew up i went to the same high school as you i think what year did you graduate i graduated it was 08 08 so yeah i wasn't even in high school yet. yeah so well i was supposed to graduate 08 i ended up staying and doing 09 and then i got a ged so i, I never even that. yeah I, I so i got i got my ged and then i've always been somebody who from 15 years old it was around 14 or 15 years old when i started you know you're smoking, drinking, and that was something that really easily helped me fit in. You know, it was something that really like killed anxiety and helped me like be able to talk to people. Um, you know, I still struggle with anxiety to this day, but it was something that just masked it. And that kind of became something that I held on to, you know, my entire life. Right. You know, I so I it became it wasn't a problem until you know it was. So I, you know, I I partied. By the time I was 18, you know, I, well, by the time I was 20, I'll say I probably moved about 11 times. So like, I've never, my, like my family's, you know, we're not really that close to begin with, but we kind of like broken apart over the years. And right. I, you know, I ended up moving so many times. I ended up staying at a lot of friends' houses and that became a thing. I just always partied and always just lived on like couch to couch to couch right. until like, you know, unless I was in a relationship until I find a girlfriend and then I'd be with them for a until while. And then I'd be out of that and then go into, <laughs> you know, so um, then at the age of 21, 2013, I ended up having, um, you know, a son, my son Carson, who is he's seven years old now. <laughs> He'll be eight in October, and man, at, he's old. I yeah, what he he's was old. Too. He's going into second grade. I'm getting old, man. It's me too. Me too. No, you are old. Oh, I'm Thirty. Just just man, that's, that's, keep going. I mean, you're like, keep never going, mind. Please. You are old. But uh, so he's he's going to be eight in October. But at that point in time, I knew there was something that had to change. But um, I just didn't want to change yet. Right. So the big thing that I kept saying uh, to his mom when we were together was like, I just need to like live it up you know, just a little bit longer before I'm ready to give it up. Cause I knew somewhere in me that I wanted to stop. And that's a dangerous thing to, I guess not pursue. I want to say, but have that mindset because I feel like it's like, there's always going to be a plus one. Like there's yep. always a tomorrow. It's always yeah. your last hurrah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's always, and I remember saying that all the time. This is my last time. This is my last time. And I remember, I remember you I saying that, say too. that. Yeah. I would say that so many times and I just, I wouldn't know why. And it started by the time Carson was, um, you know, probably a one years old, that first year of his life was the point where I transitioned 
into full alcohol alcoholism because I remember I started feeling I was working at the subway that we met and I started feeling like stuff happening to like my chest like I thought I was having like heart problems and I had to leave and I remember leaving one day uh, I told Vinny that was our old boss Vinny I remember telling him I had to go and I left and there was a liquor store right upstairs of that plaza and I went and I got a pint of whiskey and I just chugged it and all of that pain went away and that was the moment I started realizing that maybe it wasn't like it wasn't problems with me it was you know alcoholism i was withdrawing right so that it, that's when things started to snowball once you cross that line into withdrawing from alcohol there's no turning back there's right. no just having a couple beers and it being you know done so that from that moment on it was changed it was i was a changed person it was really really hard for me to stop and you know i would i would try to drink a little bit and the next thing you know i'd be black out and i'd wake up and you know i'd be like what happened again so that was a problem for a while um, until, you know, me and Car- Carson's mother, we separated and then I was living at my friend Kyle's house, which is where we ended up hanging out. We worked together for a little bit and we didn't really hang out until I lived at Kyle's. I, I think. think so. Cause I think we started going to the same gym Yeah, and then Ocean State. Kyle was also going there. So that's kind of when all three of us started hanging out a little yeah, bit. And that's when we played basketball and I took my shirt off and had to leave it in the woods. Just keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways... That's a, that's a different story. But so I lived at Kyle's house and that was my first time being sober for six months. I stayed at his house. His family welcomed me in. I remember that. Cause I remember we'd go out like I think we went bowling once, I think we went out to eat and I don't think I was 21 at the time. So I couldn't order anything, mm-hmm. but you didn't get anything. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. He's really doing this. Yeah. That was mainly because, um, when Carson's mother and I separated, I really like I felt somewhere in me that I was going to try to get her back, right? which was an unhealthy way of going sober because, you know, it worked for six months, but you know, if you're doing it for reasons that aren't, you know, for you, if you're doing it for anything outside of yourself, it's not going to last. Yeah. It's just the bandaid. Right. End of the day. Exactly. So, you know, then at some point summer came around after that six months and I relapsed with friends. I hit it from Kyle for a little bit and then. I remember Kyle telling me this. Yeah, he was he was disappointed. Um, we were still cool though, and then I moved out of his house, moved in with my mom. Um, and in my you know my family is not always the best either. If you're trying to be sober, because there's a lot of drugs and stuff that coming in and out of that house, so it's it's not always the best place. And I kind of just went on a rampage, and I ended up going to rehab my first time um, in September. I think it was uh, 2016. Wasn't it kind of spontaneous too? It was spontaneous. I was wasted at the end of the night and my mom came out and I was like, I'm going to go to rehab because, you know, we were, we were sitting at the table talking at like three in the morning. So we called the first thing I just Googled rehab and first thing that popped up, I called it, they set it up and I literally had a plane, like a flight for the next day. Wasn't it? It was in Arizona, right? Arizona. I I remember Arizona. Yeah. I think I might've been talking to you like, might've been the day before, two days before. And you were like, yeah, we should like hang out sometime, catch up. I'm like, yeah, definitely. I think I texted you that day to set something up. And you were like, yeah, I'm getting on a plane to go to Arizona. I'm going to rehab. I'm like, what? Yeah. I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, like you literally just said like, let's hang out soon. And now you're leaving? Like, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, what, like, what happens, which I found out the hard way through trial and error, is every time you quit and you're an alcoholic or you know an addict, when you relapse, it's way worse. It just happens. Things happen way harder, way faster. Right. And so I, I spiraled out of control really quickly. So like I probably relapsed and I was off to rehab probably within a, like a month or two. And then I got out of that. That was about six months of sobriety. And that was the best, that was the best experience of my, one of the best experiences of my life being in Arizona. Rehab, it changed my life. I, I saw a whole new perspective on life and how you can, you know, handle problems, handle your mindset and change your habits. And I came back with a whole new attitude. Um, I still felt upset somewhere in me about not having a relationship or anything like that. Um, but you know, that came, ended up biting me in the ass eventually. And I, that I lasted six months sober, relapsed again. Um, that in that relapse, my first relapse out of, uh, out of Arizona, when I got out of Arizona after the six months, I literally thought I was never going to drink again. And then I relapsed and that's when I realized that it was a scarier disease than I thought it was. It was very, it's very, uh, what's the word I'm trying to say? Dangerous? Yeah, it's very, like, sneaky. What's a good word for sneaky? Like, sly? Uh, Yeah, I guess. Yeah. It's very, it's a very insidious disease, I guess. And so, in that first week that I relapsed, I got my second DUI. So, like, immediately from thinking that I was, like, 
all, all good. Like I got right back into college in that six months. I got my car back, my license back from my first DUI. And I ended up, I ended up doing okay. I was doing good in school. I was having Carson every weekend. I was doing great. I was working out. Um, and then my first time it was St. Patrick's day. I relapsed for, and that first week that I relapsed, I got a second DUI. So that I ended up going off really hard for a week. My car crashed. Um, my buddy was driving at one time, um, one night and he crashed it. We parked it at my house. Uh, well, we had to get it towed to my house and then I left for rehab again. Where um, was this one? This one was in Rhode Island. So this one was, I think it was called ad care. I had a great time there too. Every rehab experience was actually a good time. Um, so then I came out of that rehab and I kind of did that too, because I wanted to push off court. Cause after that second DUI, like you, you potentially go to you know prison for the second DUI. Right. So after that, I ended up going to rehab that pushed my court date back. When I got out, I was, I was doing okay again. Um, I, when I had my court day, I ended up having to do a day and a night at the ACI from there. I went, got my, um, I had a bracelet on my ankle to be home to be in home confinement for 20 days. I had to do community service, pay like over $1,500 in fines. You know, they don't make it easy. Yeah. It sounds like, I think the important thing to, I guess, really make note of here. It sounds like a lot of little things. Like, yeah. I mean, obviously no one wants to spend a night at the ACI, but you could just spend a year at the ACI. Right. You know, like, oh, I got to be at home for 20 days. You could have been at home for yeah, so three months, I like been a lot worse. <laughs> like, so <laughs> everything that happened, like even though I had two DUIs, you know there there are situations that could have been way worse than that. Like right. when I was starting, when I was cleaning up my act, like I was really like, you know, I haven't lost that much. Yeah. You know, it's like I didn't hurt anybody. I all I had to do, you know, go through all the punishments, get my license back. Like I didn't lose that much. It's not like I had a bunch of debt or anything like that. Right. So my life was, I didn't have much, but I also didn't lose a lot. Right. So I, I was at a good starting point. So when I came back from that's why I did all those all, all that time, the home confinement, all that. I stayed sober for about two months. So my sobriety started going getting shorter and shorter after the first relapse. So it was like six months, six months, two months, relapsed. That got really bad because those that relapse I started doing harder drugs, like like cocaine, stuff like that. And then from there I went into um, a rehab again from Florida. I actually met the girlfriend I have now during that that period of time where I relapsed. Um, she didn't know that I was, I had a problem until she realized that I was cold sweating from like not drinking. Oh, shoot. She just thought I was really sick all the time. Oh, man. <laughs> she was always just like, why are you always sick? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I get, <laughs> I get sick. Oh, man. I get sick. But, uh, then I ended up telling her, um, I ended up going back to rehab the third time. I actually didn't relapse and then go to rehab. I relapsed after the home confinement and stuff met Casey during that. She realized I was um, a pretty bad drinker, convinced me to go sober. I tried going sober myself again, did two months, didn't work. I relapsed. That got really bad. And and during this time too, the, these last few times where I quit and then relapsed, quit, relapsed, I moved another like two times. So I've moved a lot. Right. Um, so, and then when I went to rehab the third time, that was in Florida. That was another cool experience. I came back. That lasted two months. Uh, July 4th came, relapsed, went to rehab again at the original spot that I had the first time, which was Arizona. And uh, in, that, in, that re in that rehab, I thought to myself, I, you know, I, I was thinking while I was there, something just clicked. And I knew that I didn't want to do this anymore. You know, all the, because, you know, it's just, it sounds like as I explain it, it's just relapse, you know, rehab, relapse, rehab. Right. But during that period of time, there's so much that happens, you know, so much stuff between me and Carson's mom, you know, so many things that are happening like behind the scenes that you don't know about. And it's, there's so much that just goes wrong and so many people that you hurt throughout this process and including yourself, obviously. Right. So, you know, after, during that period of time, I just, something clicked and I just knew, like, I didn't want to live this life. I watched myself go through all those four, the, those quitting experiences. Like I quit, relapse, quit, relapse. And during that period of time, two years went by, my son grew two years older. And I remember just like being in rehab and just feeling terrible about like how fast time was going by. You right. Know? And I just wanted to live that life with my son and just really, you know, just enjoy that. Yeah. And I wanted to be a better person. I knew I was a better person. And I just wanted to be able to prove that to myself. Because especially at the end there, that last time that I relapsed was so hard with like drugs and stuff. I was losing days. Like there was days that would like I'd start on like a Saturday and somehow it'd be Wednesday and I was just missing days in between. Wow. 
and it was just so bad. And a lot of my close friends actually don't even know how bad it actually got. Like even people that like I've been friends with my entire life, they don't know the worst of it. Like the only people who knew were Casey. She saw it. Um, you know, my, you know, my family and, um, all of YouTube. Yeah, all of YouTube, all of YouTube now, <laughs> all you guys, you guys are now part of it. So, you know, I moved out, I, I mean, I got off that last rehab, and my auntie Vicky, who, me and her have never been close, I always thought that, honestly, like, I always thought she was just extremely, like, strict person, but I realized she's a sweetheart. She invited me in to live with her, and she was always trying to help me, trying to get my life on track, and I always disappointed her, but this time I said to myself, you know, I'm just gonna follow her lead and listen to what she says. She let me move into this garage in her back, uh, her backyard, this big garage that was like a, um, a workshop. I, it was my own space. It was the first time in my life that I was able to have my own room. I've never had a room that was just mine. Right. And I remember getting in there, looking around. And I was like, this is where I'm going to change my life. And that's actually where you see a lot of YouTube videos on my YouTube channel take place is in that garage, like in that backyard right there. Oh. So that's where I ended up staying. You know, I still sober um, I, for and now I'm going on three years. And I, in that time, I got a, I got a, a new job. I work in an office now, and you know I've been doing well in school. Um, I went from having my son on the weekends to having him one week on and one week off, That's and no awesome. child support payments. So, and we're still doing that today. You know, me and my son have a great relationship. Me and uh, my son's mother, Michaela, we have a great relationship, and it's it's just been a crazy ride. That's actually awesome. Like knowing you, I guess five plus years ago now i'm not sure exactly the last time we were hanging out and working together but that's really awesome to hear and like hopefully someone watching this ho- i don't want to say hopefully someone's struggling but hopefully i guess that story inspires them to i guess get the help they need and turn their life around <laughs>